Hello Spooky family, welcome back to an all new episode of Spooky Vault Reviews. After this episode we have five more viewers choice v Spooky Vault episodes so I look forward to those. I appreciate your patience in letting me watch these thoroughly and you know all that good stuff. So let's get into it. Today's Spooky Vault is Incident in Ghostland. This was recommended to me by Tati and I am thankful for it. At first when I read the description of the movie I didn't think that I would actually enjoy it but it wasn't half bad. It's gen It's actually for like to me it would be a movie for people that aren't into horror but you know kind of like the whole psychological um, crime sort of thing if that makes any sense. Um, it kind of had a House of a Thousand Corpses vibe, except less Rob Zombie-ish, but um, let me get into that. A mom and her two daughters are moving to this old house that was their aunt's. She has creepy dolls everywhere, and they're being followed by this really creepy ice cream truck, and, you know... Obviously, you know, that's where it kind of feels a little Rob Zombie-esque and the house with all like the creepy dolls and the fact that the people that are the villains are kind of from those kind of movies. So that was pretty good. Um, so one of the daughters is a creative writer. She writes horror stories. She's obsessed with H.P. Lovecraft and all this sort of thing. And that comes into play. That's where her strength comes from. And I'm trying not to spoil the movie because I actually would recommend this for you guys to take a look at if you haven't seen it already. So one thing I liked about the film is that it didn't give away too much too soon and it made you think. You have to pay attention to it if you are going to try to watch it and play Candy Crush on your phone. Guaranteed you probably may miss things. It's not a super deep movie, but at the same time it is one of those that you have to pay attention to understand what's going on or else you will be lost. Okay, so you know, the villains come in and they commit murder and the two daughters are being tortured. And it cuts to a scene where we think that, you know, it's in the future, she survived and all this stuff. And it is then, maybe a mini spoiler, but still watch it because I'm not going in depth and you will miss a lot of things. We realize that this version of the daughter is her like safe haven in her head so she can survive the torture that her and her sister are enduring. They're being dressed up like dolls, they're being tortured, they're being thrown, they're being beaten. Um, you know, their eyes are all bruised up. And it's that creative girl's strength and ability to go into her imagination and imaginative world that keeps her alive. And that is very interesting. And like I said, even though I spoiled a little bit, definitely still check it out because I'm not giving away any deep detail. It, it is really interesting because you don't know, like, if at first you think maybe it's going to be like spiritual entities haunting these people because, you know, it's the amount of empty dolls and junk in this house. But there are villains there and they're real people so it's it's a mixture you know you kind of have to pay attention because if you miss out on little things when the creative daughter is going from her dream world to her reality you will not be able to connect the dots i think the ending was superb it was a good closure and it subtly empowered us weird creative types, which is also why I give it props. I don't want to go too in depth with this movie because I will recommend it to you guys. So if you have seen this movie, let me know in the comments down below what are your thoughts. If you haven't, have you wanted to watch it? What has stopped you from watching it? And if you do end up watching it, please let me know. I'll see you guys next week on a new episode of Spooky Vault. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and stay spooky. Bye.